Hi, I'm Mike, owner of the Ingroove in Phoenix, Arizona. Today I'm going to do the new arrival video for December 18th, 2020. About a week before Christmas, and it's uh, been getting pretty crazy over here. Online sales are doing good. That's good. But uh, yeah, people are doing their Christmas shopping online nowadays, it would seem. The store is kind of, you know, like a little bit lighter than it normally would be. But yeah. So a few things. The Stevie Ray Vaughan One Step is probably coming out the very end of this year, the beginning of the next, you know, beginning of next year. So that's really, really soon. It's getting to the point where I'm about to cut off pre-orders for that. So if that's something that you want, we're getting real close. Get your pre-order in now. Uh, the Paul McCartney Indie Exclusive White was a giant debacle. Uh, you know, they did 4,000 of them. Uh, it turns out every store wanted a slew of them. It seems like most stores from a distributor got the maximum of one. So super, super heavily allocated. There's not going to be any of those, but we're getting the indie, or excuse me, we're getting the standard black vinyl. You can purchase that on the website. That should ship out this week. Uh, I listened to the album. It's actually quite good. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of Egypt Station, but this felt more 70s. It's less overproduced more you know you can kind of tell it's paul playing acoustic instruments not the overproduction paul trying to be you know relevant to today's youth by playing music that sounds nothing like paul should play you know that's just my opinion but you know that's what it is but uh, i thought Paul McCartney 3 is actually really, really good. It's the first album of his in a while I've actually really liked. So it's actually, uh, you know, when I played it in the store, people got kind of a, you know, people got a kick out of it. They were like, wow, this is Paul McCartney? I'm like, yeah, that's pretty good. But uh, yeah, Paul McCartney 3, that is here. Also, don't have him to show you here, but maybe today, maybe tomorrow, I'm going to have the Dire Straits Mobile Fidelity, uh, self-titled and Brothers in Arms back in stock, they'll be on the website. self tie the first four, which were the all analog records, are just absolutely dynamite. Brothers in Arms, even yet, is still probably the best you're going to ever hear that album. But they did a killer job on the, the Dire Straits stuff. You know, I remember the pre-orders on that were years and years. It seemed like those records just never came. But when they did, they're dynamite. You know, those first four, I've got Love Over Gold, I think, in the top 10 in-print analog records you should own. Really, any of the first four could go in there. They're absolutely dynamite, all analog. But yeah, so let's talk about this week's releases. There's some audiophile restocks in here and some stuff that I didn't expect to have and some stuff that is hot that came really, really late. But let's start with uh, The Kinks, Lola versus The Power Man. This is a record probably considered one of The Kinks' best albums. It's one of their best commercial albums because it has Lola on it. But one of my favorite albums, this and... Village Green, I think, are probably their two, maybe Arthur, probably the best Kinks albums, but I really, really dig this. And this is an album that has been sorely missing from their imprint stuff. But yeah, 50th anniversary. It says it was remastered from the original tapes, master tapes, but you know, who knows? Uh, some photos, booklet, notes replicated original gatefold LP sleeve, but yeah. The new Pussifer. Somebody told me, so Maynard actually has a record store here, or maybe an hour and a half north, but actually somebody told me that he was selling, uh, guy comes in and he was like super, super thrilled to get, he got like an autograph version of this album for like maybe four or 500 bucks at a store. And he's like, oh, it was great. I'm like, 400 bucks, huh? That's, that's a lot of cash. <laughs> yeah. One of these days I'm going to get out to his store. So this is a title that I did not expect. So this album is, I can't get any version of it. This is the indie exclusive deluxe version. So I ordered a boat ton of these things when it came out, months and months ago. They sent me one of them. One, it happened to be enough to fill the, I only pre-sold one. So it was like a beautiful thing. I, I literally got enough to sell to cover my pre-orders. Nobody pre-ordered it. But I never, you know, I got one. They never sent any of my order. But out of the blue, when I can't get any versions of this album, I actually got the deluxe indie exclusive of this. I got the rest of my order. 
So, fantastic. This is another title I had a chance to listen to. This is an unbelievably good album. I love Impex. Impex is an audiophile label. They do killer stuff. A lot of their records I've talked about on the channel multiple times. Blow Up, Friday Night in San Francisco, both on the top 10 imprint jazz records you should own. This Columbia era, you know, this was a 10-inch LP originally. This stuff is unbelievably hard to find. I've never seen a version of this original that just wasn't chewed up. But this sounds absolutely dynamite. They only made 5,000 of these. They're all numbered. You know, and I showed this quickly on the channel last time, but man, look how nice this is. They actually, they didn't scan this cover. They replicated this from scratch. I don't know if they got the original film negatives, but this album was created from scratch. There's a book in it, and then side two actually has a bunch of bonus tracks. One of them, and I want to say it's the last track. It all depends on you. You can actually hear Frank like, uh, guiding the band you know there was a little bit the drummer had a little bit too boomy bass and you know he's calling for like you got a piece of rug to throw in his drum you know it's a little bit boomy but it's kind of a side of frank that you don't really ever hear but it's a great sounding record loaded with a ton of frank's early hits a lot of tracks you know even if you're only a casual frank sinatra fan and that alternate stuff on the b-side is actually quite cool to listen to all right mac Miller, Swimming in Circles. This is a four LP set. So this is actually really, really cool. So this is a soundtrack to a movie called Teenage Badass. So a one of my locals, he owns a uh, studio out here in Arizona. You know, and it, he records a lot of indie bands, but he was in a band called Pollen in the 90s. I think they had maybe three or four albums. But he comes in a lot and we talk about audio. It's real cool. He talks about, he's a big fan of like library music. Loves the old library tracks, you know, big horror film fan. And he comes in one day and he asks me, hey, you mind if we film, I'm working on the music side of a movie, you know, like an indie movie. Do you mind if we come in one day and film? This is years ago, maybe two, three years ago. And I said, you know, yeah, no big deal. I get people all the time. Hey, can I film something here? You know, can I shoot a photo shoot here? And it's typically, you know, somebody wants to film, it's a guy in his camcorder and a couple people. If somebody wants to do a photo shoot, it's like, you know, a girl and her boyfriend with their iPhone doing an Instagram shoot, right? So I'm thinking nothing of it. I'm like, okay, yeah, not a problem. So he tells me the day. He's like, they're going to be filming maybe in the parking lot, maybe across the street. I'm like, yeah, I don't care. So I go out there one day. After work, go outside, and it's like 40 people outside. And I'm like, uh, this, is a, this is a shoot right here. This is, I'm like, this is a movie. So there's a lighting crew, there's sound crew, there's, actor, act, there's the actors, there's the extras. I'm like, this is really cool. So I'm looking forward to seeing this one day. So years go by. COVID happened. I think this was supposed to premiere at Sundance. Uh, Never premiered. He mentioned to me, Bob mentioned to me once upon a time, like, you know, your, 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 your store is actually quite visible in the movie. You could see it. They, you know, they get in a, there is actually a liquor store across the street. And they're like, they're getting to a big altercation across the street. And, you know, you could see your record sign. You could see your store quite predominantly in the film. So I'm like, all right, man. The Ingroove is in a Hollywood movie. I want to see this. But it kept getting pushed back, kept getting put, pushed back. Well, he comes in today. They did a soundtrack and they did the score. Bob is really, really into scores, uh, and that's kind of like his pet, you know, that's what he does. He's, you know, when he brings records in, like clean them for him, he's primarily bringing in soundtracks, library music. He's really into like Italian uh, film scores, but he brings us in and he's like, you know, side one is the soundtrack to the movie, side two is the score he did, and they only did 300 of these things. It's on a pink and white splatter and a white and pink splatter. But I'm listening to his score. I'm like, man, this is fantastic. It's kind of a combination, a little funky, little. There's like a little black, like maybe a Euro black exploitation in there, like an ambient electronic. And you know, Bob's a great keyboard player, so there's a lot of good keyboard in it. And I'm like, this is absolutely fantastic. A couple of the employees that were here were like, I, I want to buy this, you know, because he only brought me a couple copies in. So he's like, okay, well, let me give you a few more copies. And I'm like, you know what? You need to sell me some of these. I need to I need to talk about this. This is actually fantastic. It's super limited. 
Teenage Badass soundtrack, the in-grooves in the back. But if you dig especially that kind of Italian disco, that electronic sound, you're really going to dig the score. So disc two is the score. Disc one is the movie soundtrack. It's like, you know, what you would expect. It's uh, the, the movie is about a band getting together or trying to make it big. I haven't seen it because it's one of those that just recently came out. I think it went like straight to on demand. Maybe it's going to be on Hulu or something. So I have yet to still see it. But side one, the actual soundtrack, eh, the score is actually absolutely fantastic. Give it a try. They only made 300 of it, 300 of them. So it's not something that, you know, will stick around for very long. But a cool story, and I'm excited to actually see the movie. Melanie Martinez EP. Ozies? Panther Rotate? I'm guessing, yeah. No clue. Secret Machines, Awake in the Brain Chamber. All right, Fortet. This is interesting. So this is actually, there's two records inside there. Two complete separate records. It looks like maybe there's an album and maybe an EP. I'm not 100% sure. Look, that's a remixes. But yeah, Fortet. There is Love In You. This is the expanded edition, which looks like it has the album and then maybe a remix album in the back. Def Leppard hits Vegas live at Planet Hollywood. Recorded in Las Vegas. This is a three disc LP set on translucent blue vinyl. New Alicia Keys album. This is titled Alicia. I don't know why this just came in, but yeah, this is Faith No More. This was a Rocktober release on yellow vinyl, and now I'm getting it now. So, Soul Wax. Night versions. Drive by Truckers, the new OK. This is a red vinyl version. Jim Croce, I got a name. They're bringing a lot of his stuff back in print. I think I showed one of his titles, and there's a couple more that might have came as well. Tim McGraw, this is hits from 2013 to 2019. I'm not a country guy. I don't have a clue what this sounds like or that even had any hits. So this is, I've showed a few of these. This is a Jethro Tull concert. This is on Ear Music. They, for, you know, last week or maybe the week before, I got like eight or nine different soundtracks by them. They released them all at once. The Alanis Morissette, they did Blondie Live, it was a DVD, uh, came out in the late 90s maybe. The two that I tried actually sounded really good, so I'm not sure uh, how that sounds, but the two I've listened to so far actually sound really good. So this is, you know, about time. So Santana Braxis, this album hasn't been in print since what, probably the Mobile Fidelity did the, the one step was maybe the last issue, but it's nice to finally have this in stock. It's obviously no, you know, mobile fidelity one step, but people ask for the album all the time. I never have it to sell. Peter Gabriel, Growing Up Live. This is a triple disc live concert. This is a half speed master. It includes a high res download code. That's actually pretty cool. Problem with a lot of the download codes is they give you the album, but they give you like an MP3 download. What the hell are you going to do with that? So... Big restock from Sam Records. Sam Records, one of my absolute favorite audiophile labels. Actually, this Miles Davis is a really, really good title. He specializes in doing a lot of the French exile musicians, you know, American musicians that went to France, the exile musicians, or the musicians that kind of went there and did some stuff like Miles Davis. This was a soundtrack. Uh, I think Elevator to the Gallows is the American translation to this. But the quality of this stuff is absolutely fantastic. I've showed this on the channel before. He replicates the flipback cover. Just like a tone poet, he gets all the original photography. 
these are unbelievably good. I own every single one. They're all fantastic. But he's in the process, I think he said, of moving his office. So this was actually quite hard to get from him because he sent me this right before he closed up shop, you know, to do the move. Ron Jefferson Choir. Fantastic record. Uh, really, really good. But I was able to get an order out of, you know, out of France before he shut down. Jeff Baker with Bobby Jasper, another great Sam record. And then these two are always super hot. The Donald Bird in Paris and Parisian Thoroughfare. Both really, really good. Sam record, fantastic label. You know, it's every bit the quality of what you would expect for a, like a Music Matters title or a Tone Poet. Really, really good. The Sword. Warp Riders. This is the 10th anniversary edition on Space Warp Color Vinyl. Gary Cinnamon, or Jerry Cinnamon, excuse me. This is cool. Absolutely love a Neo Morricone. This is a music on vinyl soundtrack to The Big Gun Down. They only did a thousand of these on orange and yellow swirled vinyl. Neo recently passed away, but I think he was voted the second best uh, music film composer of all time next to John Williams. But fantastic. Did an immense amount of stuff. One of my actual favorite shows. The Marvelous Miss Maisel. This is season three, the soundtrack. Their soundtracks are actually really, really good. Uh, if you watch the show, in the, in the show, they kind of put a lot of period correct music. And then the outside of the show, you know, the rolling credits, they typically put like a, a hit by an obscure, you know, a hit covered by like an obscure band. It's actually quite good. Soundtrack wise and again, one of my favorite shows. Britney Spears Glory. This is a limited edition deluxe version. I believe this is on a special color vinyl maybe and it has the alternate artwork. They put a little sticker there because it looks like apparently they messed up the track order. Do you want to come over plays as track two on side B, which they have listed as Slumber Party. So who knows? Don't know if that's something that maybe got corrected or if that's on the whole run, but kind of a little error there. Dream Theater, Distant Memories Live in London. This is a four LP set and a three CD box set. This is another one of those ear music titles. I actually wanted this one for myself last time, but I did not get enough to cover the orders and have one. So I forego my copy and mailed them all off. Live at Montreux, 1980. Kind of looking forward to this. I have no idea what this is or why I ordered it, but uh, Joe Hasahaji, Spirited Away. Yeah, I have no clue. I must have ordered this a long time ago. You know, they probably sent me one sheet saying this is great. You should own it. This is maybe the greatest Japanese something or other of all time. You know, people are going to love this. I'm like, all right, whatever. You know, I try to bring stuff into the store that I'm not familiar with if I think it'll sell. You know, a lot of, a lot of record stores kind of specialize in, you know, they might be a punk store. They might be a jazz store. I try to focus on the, you know, I, I focus on the stuff I like, but I carry everything. Music on vinyl, Blue Oyster Cult. This is, yeah. Fire of Unknown Origin. It's not a limited color vinyl version. I'm guessing this is just a new music on vinyl release. So this is actually, I showed you guys a lot of the ORG titles. ORG audiophile label. They did a run of 45 RPM Coltrane titles, mostly on Atlantic. I think they were all on Atlantic. You know, they did, this is Bags and Train. They did 
uh, Coltrane Jazz. They, you know, they did kind of that era of Coltrane stuff. All mastered by Bernie Grumman at 45 RPM. This is Milt Jackson and John Coltrane. This is one that has actually been out of print for a while. So if I've showed you some of those ORG titles, I think this is the last of the stuff that they did that I haven't really had a chance to show you guys. But it just got a repress and here it is. So a great series, 45 RPM, all analog. Who knows if we'll ever see a proper analog reissue of Coltrane stuff. The latest Giant Steps was not analog. You know, they did a deluxe edition that was digital. But yeah, Milk Jackson and John Coltrane, Bags and Train, that is all analog. Cut by Bernie Grunman. Intervention Records, great label. This is cut by Kevin Gray at Coherent. Joe Jackson looks sharp. Uh, super, super, super upfront about their sources. They do a fantastic job. One of the good, small, small like an indie label. They don't have very many titles to their name, but they do a really good job and they're very forthcoming of what they're actually releasing. Jamie XX in color. This is the indie exclusive vinyl on colored vinyl. I don't know musically what this is, but yeah. Don't forget guys, all this stuff can be purchased online at our website at www.theingroove.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Until next time.